Hey guys, uh, this this uh, video is made for the people of NAS Northwest Arizona Sun Forum. If you're not a member of that forum, I highly suggest you get on there and check it out if you're into solar, wind, etc. Very cool resources, very uh, excellent people. Um, I don't want to even mention people like BB or Caribacoot, I think he calls himself. and you know, There's just too many people that, that go out on a limb and, and uh, volunteer information and they're very helpful anyways uh, I am piecing my system together and wanted to demonstrate um, a thought I had that I posted on the forum and the idea was and by the way this is coming to you in solar vision I got the power pack for this camcorder plugged into this Ames inverter here um, also take note these wires that are hanging out like that going into this box here they're gonna be plumbed it's just all temporary um, anyways my idea was um, have the iota 24 volt power supply charger four stage uh, charger charge controller peak at the battery bank under yonder um, every well there's my handy dandy um, I mentioned this on the forum as well and that is a hydrometer and what you do is you suck the the um, the liquid up and you gotta get the bubbles out and they always come up to that line and you squish it out and they bubble too much etc etc anyways uh, I digress so what my idea was is turn that power supply on every maybe two and a half days check the battery bank and the battery banks low which this guy has a logic to see if it's low or not you can see up here it has um, some logic there and it's not going to charge the battery bank if the battery banks charged so um, based on my consumption rate I figured every two days or so um, two and a half days I might want to check my battery bank see if it's good see if it needs charge and if it does this thing is gonna make the decision so how am I gonna turn that thing on every two two and a half days well this is an old sprinkler system housing box that I picked up at a garage sale for a buck you can see I tried to cut some uh, a hole in it and uh, I had a little runaway there so I ended up getting the um, the old Dremel tool out and cutting a square and putting this guy in it's an Aub Auber instruments um, timer it's an awesome device. I ended up getting it for my Axial Flux machine that I was building um, to use as a tachometer because I could put a Hall Effect sensor on there and and uh, with the, you know with a with a magnet on the rotating assembly I could um, monitor the RPMs etc etc. But it does an awful lot. It's a multifunction timer. Um, set it up as a timer. You can input, which is cool. You can input 85 to 265 volts AC or DC. However, on DC it will run a lot lower um, voltage. Um, I could power it off 24 volts. But it op operates as a relay control, a timer, single function, dual function, um, a frequency counter, tachometer, you can multiply so if you got three phase coming in like I would have for my um, axial flux which I don't have up yet because my tower is just sitting there empty um, I could divide it or multiply it by three whatever I want to do um, it's a counter etc etc you can sense um, on rise on lag on on fall of the waveform um, etc etc but anyways cool stuff so what I'm what I've done is I've set up this timer here um, and I know this isn't wired correctly guys everybody's gonna spaz but so I wired up the timer to this 24 volt relay which controls the AC power coming out of the the wall which I have hanging here right there goes in and comes around and I have the timer set up right now for one minute and when it goes um, 
And when it reaches one minute, the relay will close. The relay closes, therefore sends 24 volts coming from the box here, down here, from my battery bank, and throws that relay. That relay closes a contact, which sends 110 volts, 120 volts, whatever you want to call it, to this um, outlet here. And I also have a, a handy off switch in case I need to turn it off or I don't want the power supply turning on. There's also a LED indicator here. So when that thing goes off, or on I should say, when the relay closes, um, it will notify me. So what I can do is if I plug this in, you can see the the timer there starts at one minute and it's starting to count down. Um, I'm going to set that for probably 72 hours and um, every 72 hours I'm going to have the IOTA um, power up, check the batteries, and then there's a hold time you set on this Auber Instruments uh, timer function and I'm going to have it stay on for maybe 8 hours, maybe 12 hours because the IOTA has uh, the three phase, it has the bulk, the absorption, and the uh, float. And I know it can stay in absorption for up to eight hours, I believe. Um, or maybe that's float, but I'm um, not really sure. Anyways, here's some AC lines. This is nothing dead right now. This AC is going to my inverter, which ultimately goes back to the house. I'll show you that later. Um, but right now I'm waiting for that. There it goes. So the relay just hit. And it's on the 8 hour countdown. You can see it's on by the LED indicator, which is throwing power up to the three stage charger, which comes back and is powering up the, um, the battery bank. And I know that's a bird's nest right here, but uh, you guys probably hate that, I'm sure. Uh, but everything will be wire tied when I'm done. Everything will be plumbed. The inverter is going to come up and get plumbed, etc. I don't want to even justify that right now. But um, anyway, that was my idea. My disconnect doesn't work right now. I don't have my voltage meter on right now. It's um, it's all a work in progress. But my biggest um, care was to make sure my batteries don't die. So there it is, guys. Uh, give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. Um, and thanks again to everybody. Bye.